With Dye's Aircraft Division making the 1100th delivery of the TBM series in October, only two years since the 1000th example of the very fast turboprop flew out the door, the TBM 960 marks a high point in the history of the airplane. With a program to update the model every two years as part of its strategic plan, Dye hit the mark with both EASA and FAA certification on the 960 in the first half of 2022. The latest model includes a new version of the PT-6 series and the first of the PT-6E iterations to go into one of the company's airplanes. The Dash 66 XT gains about 49 horsepower in its thermodynamic rating while retaining the 850 horsepower flat rating of the previous PT-6A on the 940. Up front, the PT-6 turns a Hartzell Raptor 5-blade composite prop like its predecessor, tuned to the new engine and looking super sharp on the ramp. The EPIX engine and propeller electronic control system streams all of the bits flowing from the engine and records the information, storing the data in a non-volatile memory on board. Once the airplane is on the ground, the EPIX connects to the nearest available cellular network through its own 4G modem. When the pilot shuts down the engine, it transfers the data to a ground station for trend monitoring. I spent a total of three and a half hours flying the 960 back following the airplane's introduction of the Sun and Fun fly-in earlier this year, and I got a chance to see not only the way it performs in cruise, but also through our photo mission over the Atlantic Ocean near Dye's U.S. Service Center in Pompano Beach, Florida. With an auto start protocol intended to reduce the introduction of error and closely monitor the startup sequence, getting into the 960 and taking to the air feels streamlined. It certainly helped during our pre-down start as the coffee was kicking in. While cruising in the flight levels is all about speed, and the 960 clocks a similar max speed as the 940, 330 knots true at 28,000 feet. Air to air is all about handling, responsiveness, and control on the lower end of the green arc. With two foot tall winglets bracing the tips, the subtle improvement in roll control came through and the throttle felt well coupled to my hand and in a comfortable position for both the fine and coarse movements required. We did countless circles, staying in position behind a Cessna 310, and then got to do the best part, the breakaways. Returning to base, I had the opportunity to practice my TBM landings once more. Like other aircraft I currently fly, approach speed is about 85 knots on short final, leading off over the numbers. Keep in mind that you're landing the nose after the mains in a deliberate fashion, and you can score well on the Me and My TBM app against your friends. As we secured the airplane after the mission, I had a chance to take in the upgrades to the passenger cabin. With ergonomic seats, updated USB charging ports, and overhead spot LED lighting, it looks like it's almost as nice in the back as it is up front. Well, maybe not. <laughs>